Hispanic Heritage Month kicks off in mid-September. It might seem strange for a month to start in the middle, but many different Hispanic countries celebrate their Independence Days sometime between September 15th and 23rd, so the dates fit with when they were already celebrating. Hispanic heritage is hard to miss in Texas, which is home to more than 11.5 million people of Hispanic descent. Today we are focusing on the sights, sounds, and flavors of Hispanic cultures in Texas and learning all about Fort Worth's historic Rosemarine Theater. Vamanos! Hi friends, I have a song to share today. It's called De Colores. We'll sing the first verse in the original Spanish and then in English. If you know it, sing along. De colores, de colores se viste en los campos en la primavera. De colores, de colores son los pajaritos que vienen de afuera. De colores, de colores es el arco iris que vemos lucir. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. All the colors, all the colors, oh how they dress up the country in springtime. All the colors, all the colors of birdies, oh how they come back to us outside. All the colors, all the colors and rainbows we see shining bright in the sky. And that's why a great love of colors makes me feel like singing so joyfully. And that's why a great love of colors makes me feel like singing so joyfully. Good job, everybody. Wow, what a beautiful song. The title, De Colores, literally translates to Made of Colors. It is a traditional Spanish language folk song. The lyrics depict an expression of joy and a celebration of all creation with its many bright colors. De Colores is often heard during traditional Mexican celebrations with parades and folk dancing. It is also associated with the United Farm Workers Union as one of the most commonly heard songs during rallies. In addition to being used as the unofficial anthem in the farm worker movement, it is also an inspirational song in religious ceremonies. This song is often taught in schools in the United States as an example of a common Mexican folk song. Can you think of any other traditional folk songs? Cultures around the world have various songs to celebrate different things. It's fun to explore different cultures through music, and the best part about music is that you don't need to know the language to enjoy it. Who knows, you might even pick up some new words in a different language. Have you ever seen a mariachi band? Mariachi began in the late 1700s or early 1800s in West Central Mexico. Mariachi bands usually include the vihuela, a five-string guitar, the guitarron, a large fretless six-string bass guitar, a standard six-string acoustic guitar, and violins and trumpets, which usually play the melody. Here in Fort Worth, Northside High School is home to an award-winning mariachi ensemble, Mariachi Escuelas de Plata, or Silver Spurs. The school recently got a brand new mariachi rehearsal hall. This community mural of Mariachi Escuelas de Plata can be found at Franco's on the north side. Carter Riverside, Polytechnic, and Pascal High Schools also have mariachi programs. Learning mariachi can be a great way to connect with Mexican tradition. And you don't have to be in high school to get started. I just like, like being with everyone else. Like, it's, it's fun. And it's also nice to, like when you start getting the music down, you can actually play everything together. Do you enjoy theater, dance, visual arts, and music? Artes de la Rosa is a cultural center for the arts, specifically Latino art and culture, in the city of Fort Worth. This nonprofit organization manages a historic gem in Fort Worth, the Rosemarine Theater. 
Our friends at Arthur Stella Rosa created this next video to spotlight the history of the Rosemarine Theater, a place where lots of Latino artists perform and where kids ages seven and up, like you probably, can take part in the Arthas Academy to learn about theater, dance, visual arts, and music. Cantinflas, María Félix, Dolores del Río, Jorge Nigrete, Sarah García, The Latin Express, Little Joe y la Familia, Dolores Huerta. Noted entertainers who have appeared and graced the stage and screens of the Rosemarine Theater, a place where the past lives and breathes and where a community celebrates the promise of the future. In 1876, the Texas and Pacific Railroad arrived in Fort Worth, Texas, transforming the north side into a mecca of the cattle industry. Fort Worth became known as the Queen City of the South, where the West begins and shines brightest. As a heavy influx of immigrant workers and families moved in to work the industry, a need for entertainment and community soon followed. The Rosemarine Theater opened shortly after, Built in 1914, the Rosemarine Theater provided a haven of sorts for immigrant families and Latinos all over Fort Worth. The Rose was a home for Latinos to celebrate culture and language. Out of all the Spanish-speaking barrios of Fort Worth, La Fundación, La Diecisiete, El Papalote, El Pujido, La Garra, El Pozo, El Tepe, La Yarda, La Corte, Rock Island, La Loma. The Rose was where they all came to hear the sounds and see the visions of Mexico. The Golden Age of Mexican Cinema, a movement in which Spanish language cinema was the dominant entertainment in the world, shone in all its glory at The Rose. The screenings were often in the presence of the international stars of the time. In 1962, after the closing of the Armour Meat Packing Plant, a change occurred. Economic downfall hit the North Side hard, and the once thriving community began a rapid decline. More people and families moved out, and bars, drugs, and violence moved in and thrived. A community out of work and fighting each other provides no foundation on which hope can build. In January of 1977, Luis Zapata was elected to the city council and, in his own words, manipulated money to come to the north side. One of the first things he championed was returning the area to the original zoning with an eye toward breathing new life into what was once and would be again the heart of the city's north side. In the Rosemarine Theater, they had the foundation to rebuilding the community. The Rose was declared eligible for a spot on the National Register for historical and cultural significance, as well as for its architecture. Since then, the Rose has been a haven for a current and future generation of theater artists, musicians, filmmakers, storytellers, and creative thinkers, artists of all disciplines, as well as the House of Artists Academy, an award-winning youth program, honored by both the White House and the Kennedy Center, where students are immersed in the arts of theater, creative writing, dance, art, and technology classes, creating the masterpieces of the future. In 2004, the Rose housed Fort Worth's only Latino theater company, Teatro de la Rosa, which produced a number of world and regional premieres. The Rosemarine Theater, a place where the past lives and breathes, and where a community thrives and builds the promise of the future. Artes de la Rosa is dedicated to preserving, promoting, and interpreting the arts, culture, lives, and history of the Latino community for all to enjoy. Hi. 
Hi everyone! When I think of Hispanic Heritage Month, I think of drinking some authentic Cuban coffee or cafecito at any restaurant in Little Havana or La Pequeña Habana. This neighborhood in Miami, Florida is named after Cuba's capital and it's famous for its festivals celebrating Cuban heritage. Next, let's head over to the south of Texas to visit the Selena Museum in Corpus Christi. Selena, or Selena, was considered the Queen of Tejano, or La Reina de Tejano, which is a type of music that mixes country and western in Spanish. And although Selena is no longer with us, we will forever remember her for her music and especially her unique style. And when we talk about Hispanic Americans and their contributions, we can't forget about Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist, or astrofísico, who is of Puerto Rican descent from his mother's side of the family and has made learning about space so much fun. Ballet Folklorico literally translates to folkloric dance in Spanish. This is a collective term for traditional Mexican dances that emphasizes the local traditional culture. One of the major characteristics of this dance is the use of colorful dresses and hairstyles. These outfits are often different in different regions. Although this dance is rooted in tradition, it doesn't mean that it is a dance of the past. Can you imagine yourself being a ballet folklorico dancer? Try this! Paper flowers have been a part of Hispanic culture for a very long time. Today, I'm going to show you how simple it is to make your own. To make your tissue paper flower, all you'll need is a stapler, four sheets of tissue paper, and a pair of scissors. The first step is to open your tissue paper all the way and then fold it in half. And once you fold it in half, you're going to crease on that line. And now we're going to fold it in half again, but this time we're going to fold upwards. Now that we have a smaller rectangle, we're going to go ahead and take the top left corner and fold it down to the bottom right. Now that I have this shape, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the tail. Now that I've cut my triangle out, I'm going to go ahead and open my triangle back up to the square. And this side is still attached, so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go ahead and cut through all the layers to open them up and have this side open as well. Okay, now that this side has been cut open and all of our squares are loose, we're going to start accordion folding it. So I'm gonna fold it about an inch in, fold it there, keep that fold in and go back the other direction and fold it about an inch in the other direction. And whenever you finish, you should have a strip like this. Next, I'm gonna take my stapler and I'm gonna find the center of my group and I'm gonna give it a good staple. All right, now that it's stapled, it's time to cut our ends. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut a U shape on the end. Okay, there you go. You can see I've rounded both ends and it doesn't have to be perfect because once you start opening it up, you won't even be able to tell that there's any imperfections. So now it's time to start fluffing our flower. And there you go, you have a beautiful tissue paper flower ready for display. And you can always try cutting the ends in different ways. So instead of cutting a U shape, maybe you can cut a V shape and see if that changes the pattern of your flowers. If you're ever moseying around the stockyards and you're looking for some awesome food with a really cool view, be sure to check out the best known restaurant in Fort Worth, Joe T. Garcia's. Joe T. Garcia's restaurant was created 90 years ago in 1935 by Joe T. and his wife, Jessie. Back then, the restaurant was in their house and could only feed 16 people, but the restaurant has had several additions to it. A patio here, a dining area over there, and now it can seat up to 1,000 people at a time. Joe T.'s has some cool things about it. First, the Garcia family still uses all of the original recipes and cookware that their grandparents used and they even cook with the original stove. Second, there's only a few items to choose from on the menu, but this helps them feed 1,000 people really fast. And last, this restaurant has a huge patio with lots of greenery. You kind of feel like you're on vacation in an enchanted forest when you're there. 
Hispanic heritage is full of color. There's color in the traditional clothing, parties, and even the things that you eat. Wait a minute, was that polentas? Okay, now I want one. Let's head over to Almost Palatheria in Fort Worth and get a polenta. At first, this cold deliciousness might look like a regular American popsicle, but it's not. American popsicles are flavored with lots of sugar, but polentas are made with fresh ingredients like fruits, nuts, and spices. Polentas are made in many different flavors, and there are even some that kids might find kind of unique, like corn, avocado, and pineapple cilantro. For now, I'm gonna stick with my regular old strawberry and cream paleta. Have you ever seen folks walking around with a cup of fruit with red stuff all over it? Well, that's chamoy. While some of us may only add a little bit of salt to our fruit, chamoy is a salty, sweet, tangy sauce that brings out the flavor of whatever fruit you're eating. Although chamoy was implemented by Mexico, it was actually created by a Japanese man who moved to Mexico in the 1950s. He created this sauce with apricots that you can find in Japan and he named it chamoy. Now chamoy is widely known and it's used in fruit, snacks, and even some drinks. Hispanic culture is known for its spicy food and salsas, but have you ever had spicy candy? I recently went to a candy store and the employees there helped me pick out two spicy candies that I should taste. First up, mango. Okay, so mango is a sucker and it has some spices on it and it looks kind of hot. I'm kind of scared, but here we go. Mmm, that's actually pretty good. If you like soury, pickly, kind of spicy stuff, then you're definitely gonna like this one. Okay, I think I found my new favorite candy. <laughs> Now I'm gonna try the Lucas. Okay, it actually just tastes like the chamoy that I had on the fruit earlier. All right, so I have two great saucy kind of hot candies. We just learned a lot about color for food. Which one will you try next? Now let's celebrate a local celebrity. Chef Omar Flores grew up in El Paso and his parents moved to Texas from different regions in Mexico, Durango for his mother and a town near Monterrey for his father. Chef Flores has been working in DFW restaurants for more than 15 years, but he was helping out in his family's restaurants as soon as he was old enough to hold a knife. He has twice been nominated for Best Chef in the Southwest by the prestigious James Beard Award Foundation and his restaurants have been on several Best of DFW lists. He currently runs two restaurants with several locations, Whistlebridges, which focuses on fried chicken, and Muchacho, which Flores says hits all the Tex-Mex feelings. Mmm, I agree. There are lots of cool shops to visit when you're looking for Hispanic and Latino food. I have a guessing game for us to play. We'll take a look at a word for a kind of shop, and then guess what they sell. You ready? We'll start with an easy one. This shop is a tortilleria. Hmm. That sounds like the word tortilla. If you guessed they sell tortillas, you were right. For our next question, let's try one a little more challenging. This shop is a panaderia. If we break it down, it has the word pan, which means bread. If you guessed that they sell pan, or bread, you were right. Let's see if you can guess the next one. This shop is a fruteria. Hmm. Did you notice the word fruta? That sounds like the word fruit. If you guessed that they sell fruit or fruta, you were right. For our last question, this one is the most tricky. This shop is a carneseria. Hmm. Let's 
let's break down the word a little. Carneseria has the word carne in it. Carne means meat. If you guessed they sell meat, you were right. Thanks for joining us today. Just because we're coming to the end of this episode doesn't mean that the rainbow stops here. Check out these titles from your local Fort Worth Public Library branch using either in-person or curbside pickup. The Flying Girl, How Ada de Acosta Learned to Soar by Margarita Engel. Illustrated by Sarah Palacios. Six months before the famous Wright brothers' first flight, Ada de Acosta became the first woman to fly a powered aircraft. Separate is Never Equal, Sylvia Mendez and Her Family's Fight for Desegregation by Duncan Tanatu. Years before the landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling Brown v. Board of Education, Sylvia Mendez, an eight-year-old girl of Mexican and Puerto Rican heritage, played an instrumental role in Mendez v. Westminster, the landmark desegregation case of 1946 in California. Just Ask, Be Different, Be Brave, Be You by Sonia Sotomayor. Illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Feeling different, especially as a kid, can be tough. But in the same way that different types of plants and flowers make a garden more beautiful and enjoyable, different types of people make our world a more vibrant and wonderful place. Pepe and the Parade, a celebration of Hispanic heritage. Words by Tracy Kyle and pictures by Mareli Ortega. Pepe, who is Mexican-American, enjoys participating in a festival celebrating his heritage and that of his family and friends, who are from Chile, Ecuador, Peru, and many other countries. The Texas Trail of Fame, located in the Stockyards National Historic District, honors the individuals and organizations that have made significant contributions to the Western way of life. Similar to the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Los Angeles, California, these large bronze medallions are found along the sidewalk and help recognize important individuals such as Jose Antonio Navarro and Jerry Diaz. Have you been watching the Learn Dream Do show for the past year? If not, check out the episode we did on Hispanic Heritage Month. Find it and other episodes of the Learn Dream Do show on the Fort Worth Public Library's YouTube channel. The Dallas Latino Culture Center building was designed by Richard and Victor Legareta. They also designed the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. The LCC also offers exhibitions and programs that celebrate Hispanic culture. Check out their website for more information by visiting lcc.dallasculture.org. Another great location for arts and culture a little closer to home is Arts de la Rosa, located on North Main Street. They are dedicated to preserving, promoting, and interpreting the art, culture, lives, and history of the Latino community. Check out their website by visiting www.artsdelarosa.org. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.